Who can forget the time Marcus Brutus plotted against his own friend? From leaking state secrets to royal backstabs, people have made decisions that go way beyond letting down their buddies. We're talking deep betrayals of comrades and country. These are some of the most shocking betrayals that altered the course of history. First up, we've got the Battle of Hong Kong in 1941. So during World War II, Canada got a call from Britain asking for backup. Now, British Major General Grant might have been clueless, but Chief of Canadian General Staff Harry Creerer likely had a heads up. Now, here's where the betrayal hits hard. Creerer, having a list of battalions, picked the greenest troops from Class C, the Winnipeg Grenadiers, and Canadian Royal Rifles for the new Sea Force. These recruits lacked proper training and gear, and when the Japanese attacked, they were in deep trouble. Brigadier Lawson tried to rally them, but with such green troops, it was just a matter of time. The Japanese overwhelmed them, even attacking wounded soldiers in a hospital. The Winnipeg Grenadiers and the Royal Rifles trusted their country, but were thrown into danger without proper support. In the end, 290 Canadians lost their lives, and 493 were left wounded. These guys were betrayed by their country, and it's tough to sympathize. And the bigger question is, why were Canadian troops sent to defeat an East Asian British colony when the war in Europe was in full swing? This next guy, though, leaked state secrets. John Walker, once a respected figure in the U.S. Navy, took a dark turn after retiring in 76. His ex-wife revealed his shady dealings dating back to 1967 when facing money problems, he sold classified Navy info to the Soviets. In the winter of 68, Walker, a former communications watch officer, committed treason. He didn't stop there. After leaving the Navy, he involved his brother and son in his spy ring. The intel he shared allowed the USSR to track U.S. ships globally. In 1985, Walker cut a deal with investigators, earning a life sentence. He passed away in 2014, leaving a colossal impact that experts say could have favored the Kremlin in a 70s war. But prison is nothing compared to what this next guy faced when his comrades let him down. Let's look at the betrayal of Guy Fox and his daring plan in 1605. This guy was plotting to sneak 36 barrels of gunpowder into a cellar to blow up Parliament and kill the king. Yeah, that's the gunpowder plot they celebrate every November 5th with Guy Fawkes Day in the UK. Back in the 17th century, the Catholics faced heat in England under Protestant King James I. Fawkes and his Catholic rebels aimed to blow up Parliament and take out the king. But a mystery crew member tips off Lord Montego to steer clear on the 5th. Smart move. Fox gets arrested in 1606, leading to his execution for treason. What he did was pretty bad for sure. But this next guy's name is synonymous with traitor in the United States. Benedict Arnold. This high-ranking Revolutionary War officer went from American hero to British informant. He was a key player during the war, supplying ammo, leading in New Haven, and rolling with big names like Philip Schuyler and George Washington. After some wins with Ethan Allen, things soured. Arnold got the heat for taking the lead role and missing promotion in 1777. Feeling betrayed, he tried quitting, but George Washington said, hold up. Then, boom, injury struck. A musket ball and a horse crash left him messed up. Off the battlefield, Arnold faced debts, got scolded by Washington, and secretly spoke with the British through John Andre. Feeling mistreated, he bad control of West Point and revealed American secrets in 1780, causing chaos in Virginia. Washington, heartbroken, trusted Arnold, but he changed sides, vanished, and stirred up trouble. But some wonder if America betrayed him first. This next traitor did much worse, though, and betrayed her community. La Malinche was a key player in Spain's conquest of Mesoamerica back in the 1500s. Originally an enslaved woman given to Spanish conquistador Herman Cortes, La Malinche switched sides, using her linguistic skills. Despite her language skills, Malinche didn't leave behind any personal records. What we know about her is stitched together from stories, interpretations, and opinions of others. But what we do know is that she became an interpreter for Cortes. She dished out crucial info from the surrounding areas, helping the Spaniards dodge attacks and wipe out communities that dared stand against them. Up next is a man who will forever be remembered as a traitor in China, Wang Jingwei. Japan eagerly welcomed His Excellency Wang Qingwei, 
the puppet president from Nanking, marking the beginning of a new era of collaboration between Japan and the corporate Chinese state. Now, let's rewind a bit. Wang Jingwei, a beloved political figure in China, had a thriving career after the 1911 Wu Chong uprising. He joined the Kuomintang party led by Sun Yat-sen and climbed the ranks to become a senior official. When Sun Yat-sen passed away in 1925, it triggered a leadership battle between Wang and his rival, Chiang Kai-shek. After losing to Chiang Huang, Wang took an unexpected turn. In 1940, when Japan tightened its grip on parts of China, Wang struck a secret deal with the Japanese Empire. Fast forward and Wang found himself installed as a puppet president at odds with his former party, now under the leadership of Chang. Wang's journey took a dark turn, and he passed away in Japan in 1944, forever remembered as a traitor. Next, we've got one of the most famous betrayals in history. Marcus Junius Brutus carved his betrayal into history with those famous words, At tu Brute? This drama unfolded in 44 BCE, more than four seasons after Julius Caesar took the reins of the Roman Republic and transformed into a dictator. Concerns were brewing in the Senate that Caesar was amassing too much power. That's when Brutus, Decimus Junus Brutus, Albinus, and Gaius Cassius Longinus, part of Caesar's inner circle, decided to take action. The plan? A fatal turn against their once ally. Almost 60 major members of Roman society were in on it. Then came March 15th, Caesar's big day in the Senate. He gets stabbed 23 times by his very own senators. The idea was to steady the Republic, but whoops, it sent it spiraling into eventual collapse in 27 BCE. Okay, everybody knows Hitler was bad, but this guy admired him so much that he even betrayed his own country. Let me tell you about Vidkun Quisling. He's basically the ultimate Norwegian traitor in the US. So Quisling was a Norwegian politician with a very problematic pro-Nazi scene. He created his own party, National Suling, straight out of Hitler's playbook. Despite Norway being relaxed about different religions, Quisling's anti-Semitic vibes didn't win any popularity contests. In the 30s, Hitler was making movies and Quisling, now the Minister of Defense, was starry-eyed, even having face-to-face -face meetups. In December 1939, he spilled the beans on his plan to unite superior Germanic countries. And bam, Hitler invaded in 1940. Then it was revealed that apparently, Quisling had spilled many military secrets. The government messed up and Oslo became wide open for the Germans. Quisling took charge, but his unpopular pro-Nazi rule flopped. Hitler brought in Turboven. Quisling lost support and even Hitler dismissed him by 1942. Post-war, Quisling faced the death penalty for betraying Norway. Ouch! This next guy betrayed his homeland so he could get some reward. Let's go back to 480 BCE for the betrayal of Ephialtes of Cochis. It was during the time of the Persian invasion led by King Xerxes, so Xerxes brought a massive Persian army up to 4 million strong. The Greeks, led by Leonidas, set up a roadblock at Thermopylae, holding down the narrow pass. Now, here's the thing. The Persians were stuck, figuring out how to navigate. That's where Ephialtes came in. But he had an agenda, double-crossing his own country for a sweet reward. He revealed the truth about a secret trail, the Yanapea path to the Persians. With this intel, the invaders sidestepped the Greeks and launched a surprise attack, securing victory. But here's the twist. Even with the wind, the Persian army took a massive hit at Thermopylae. Thanks for tuning in, and if you want to catch more awesome content like this, make sure to click on the next video.